Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight, talking about weapons. Now, we hear a lot about these 144,000 individuals that's supposed to save humanity. One of the things that we hear are they're kind of like soldiers. They're the Father's army that's going to do battle here in the last days to save humanity. As man seems like he's trying to destroy it. One thing about soldiers is they have to have weapons. And so today we're going to go down through the third testament of the Bible and we're going to find out what these weapons are. What are the weapons of the 144,000? Now I say the weapons of the 144,000 because they are the guys who's going to save humanity using these weapons. But they are not the only ones that have access to these weapons. They are not the only ones with these weapons. Any of us can take advantage of these weapons. 144,000 chosen elect or not. So let's find out what these weapons are. So I was talking to my little brother the other day with all of this stuff that's going on in the world. He mentioned, he said, bruh, he said, when I get home from work, I'm going to buy me some guns. I'm like, some guns? <laughs> I told him to hold off on those guns. I told him there was better weapons out there. So we're going to go down through the third testament of the Bible and we're going to find out what these better weapons are. Now. When we're talking about the weapons of the 144,000, we need not be thinking of weapons like G.I. Joe. We need to be thinking about weapons like X-Men. Because these guys are not fighting against flesh and blood. No, they're fighting against principalities and powers. So let's start over here in chapter 40 and work our way back around. Chapter 40 is the forces of good and evil. We're going to start down here in a section called evil and man in service of evil. And let's look at verse 50. He says, in this period, the influence of evil is greater than that of good. Therefore, the force which dominates humanity is that of evil, from which are derived selfishness, deceit, lust, pride, pleasure in causing injury, destruction, and low passions. The illnesses which torment men originate from that moral imbalance. So the weapons of the 144,000 won't be bows and arrows, knives and guns, nuclear weapons or smart bombs. No, these weapons have to be way more sophisticated than that. Look at 51. He says, men do not have the weapons to fight against those forces. They have been conquered and taken prison to the abyss of a life without spiritual light without true happiness, without aspirations toward good. So if you take a look throughout humanity, you see this to be the case. It's like mankind is at the will of these evil forces that dominate them. It's like we're powerless against them. No one seems to be able to make any headway against these dark forces that control humanity. Verse 52 says, now, while man believes himself to be at the peak of wisdom, he does not know that he is in the abyss, with the abyss being the opposite of the peak of wisdom. 53 says, I who know your beginning and your future in eternity have given mankind to battle against the forces of evil since the first era, but they have rejected them and preferred a battle of evil against evil in which no one triumphs, for in the end all will be defeated. The first era is talking about Moses' times, when people fought with clubs and rocks. You're looking at the evolution of weapons over humanity. Well, imagine what our weapons look like in the third era. Look at verse 54. He says, It is written that evil shall not prevail, which means that at the end of the times it shall be good which triumphs. So if we're using primitive weapons to fight evil with evil, 
It will be non-primitive weapons that will conquer evil altogether. And as the 144,000 emerge from the wilderness in a time when mankind is going through great turmoil, it is by their weapons that the flame of evil will be extinguished. Look at verse 55. If you ask me which were the weapons with which I endowed humanity to fight against the forces or influence of evil, I will tell you that they were prayer, perseverance in the law, faith in my word, and love for one another. These are the weapons of the 144,000. Prayer, the most powerful weapon of them all. Like we said, don't think G.I. Joe, think X-Man. With the power of mere thoughts, these people can control the elements. They can stop the war machine. They can stop nuclear bombs. They can stop illnesses. They can stop hate around the world. And that's what they will do by way of prayer and their thoughts. Prayer is their ultimate offensive weapon. And what about their defensive weapon? Perseverance in the law. That is a shield that no primitive weapons can penetrate. By being obedient to the law, these people have angels protecting them. As all of us who are obedient to the law have angels protecting us as well. And as man may wish to harm these individuals, that's like trying to harm Samson or Elijah. Anybody that's obedient to the law has protections that modern, that most cannot understand. And then faith in my word, his word is the sword that will cut asunder anybody that will come against them. Having faith in his word gives these people the ability to know the future know the outcome of their trials so in the heat of the battle when all others are wary and concerned for their lives these individuals will stand strong and ready to fight knowing the reason for the trials and the tribulations but don't leave out love for one another love is more powerful than evil it always has been the only reason why we live in evil times is because people have put away love and have desired evil instead. But love has the ability to conquer even the wild beasts. And it will be used to conquer the evil forces fighting against humanity. So let's step down through the rest of the Third Testament looking for the word weapon. And see that there are other weapons related to these that the 144,000 use and will use against dark forces, both seen and unseen. Looking down here at verse 74, it says, You have become so inured to evil that even those men who invent new weapons of death you call great, because in an instant they can destroy millions of beings and yet. You call them wise. What is your reasoning? Greatness can only be of the spirit. And only he is wise who travels the path of truth. Talking about these nuclear bombs. And how we call these people so smart for having invented nuclear bombs that can kill millions of people at one time. Why would we call them wise? Sure they may be smart in those technologies. These may be highly intelligent people. But intelligence does not equal wisdom. If they had to use their intelligence to save millions of lives, then they may be considered wise. But to use their knowledge to kill people? That's not wise at all. Now here in verse 79, we're talking about the love of the Father. He says, Truly I tell you that there is no power strong enough to oppose my love. For enemies and rival forces are small and weak. And the weapons that have battled against truth and justice has always been fragile. Talking about those who have come against the father and his followers. Sure, they have been able to harm those that are on the fringes of the camp. But those that have trust in his word, their weapons have been found small and weak. 
Now, down here in chapter 41, which is called Connections Between This World and the Beyond, we learn, we learn about evil spirits that control the world. Like we said a few minutes ago, we fight against principalities and powers. Most of these powers are invisible. They dwell in the spirit world, but yet they have an effect on our minds, our feelings, and our will nonetheless. Verse 29 says, The great legions of disturbed spirits taking advantage of the ignorance of humanity and their insensibility and lack of spiritual vision make war on them. And men have not prepared their weapons of love for defense against the attacks. So then in this struggle, they appear to be defenseless. See, we have to understand that we have thousands of eyes watching us at all times. Invisible eyes, some of which are here to help us, many of which are to create ambushes on our path. We have to have our weapons intact in order to fight against these evil spirits. With love and with prayer, we fight against these evil spirits, thwarting their ability to take control of us and make us do stuff that gets us in trouble. You ever heard somebody say that the devil made them do it? Depends on how you define the word devil, that's absolutely true. This devil that they're talking about of the legions of evil spirit that surrounds and follows the evil hearted man. These spirits cause them to do all kinds of evil crap on a daily. But let's go on. Down here in 36 it says, Among humanity legions of beings of darkness come, like the clouds of a storm causing upheavals, befogging minds, and bewildering the hearts of men. And although men have weapons to defend themselves from these assaults, some do not know how to choose from among them, while others do not even imagine they have them. So the evil forces have their way with humanity. This is why the world seems to be turning so evil. Some think they can fight evil with evil, but that's never going to work. Others don't know they have weapons at all, and so they are defenseless. Looking down here in verse 52, he says, So that this humanity can defend itself and free itself from evil influences, it must have knowledge of the truth that surrounds it. It must learn to pray with the Spirit and know as well with how many gifts its being is endowed so that it may employ them as weapons in the great battle for good versus evil, of light against darkness, and of spirituality opposed to materialism. We must understand our weapons to fight against these evil influences. And we can't be like those who just have a blind faith, thinking that nothing can harm them because they have faith. We have to have knowledge along with that faith. We have to have knowledge in what the word actually says so that we can understand what our weapons truly are. You look right there where he says, learn to pray with the spirit. For many of us, that's a whole different way of praying. Instead of praying to God or Lord, we use the name Father. And to identify exactly what Father we're talking about, we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name in our prayers. And do we say it out loud? No, these prayers are said silently, spirit to spirit. The Father is inside of us. He is closer to us than our eyelashes. There is no need to talk to him out loud. Some will argue that a verbal prayer is almost useless by the 144,000 because these enlightened ones know better. They know that spirit to spirit communication is important and a verbal prayer is close to materialism which is virtually useless. And this is what we're talking about here. We can also go in and do a search for the word gifts as we talk about these weapons as the gifts go hand in hand with the weapons it just it depends on the circumstances in which you're using them but we'll save that for another class 
In this one, we're talking about the weapons used in the great battle of good versus evil, light against darkness. And what does it boil down to? Spirituality opposed to materialism. The 144,000 will be spiritual beings. Still in chapter 41, let's look down at verse 48. He says, I send this message of light to all the peoples of the earth to be the wake up call for men so that they may understand who is the enemy they must struggle against until victory. And what are the weapons that unknowingly they already bear? And this is why we're doing this class. So that we can identify what the weapons are. But notice right there he says how they already bear them. See now I titled this video the weapons of the 144,000. But they are not the only individuals that have these weapons. We all have these weapons and have had them since birth. The problem is, is that we don't use them. We don't know we have them or we reject them. And that's what sets the 144,000 apart from the rest of us is they will actually use these weapons to help the rest of us out. They will use these weapons to save humanity from extinction. But now we have mentioned several of the weapons given to humanity, but we haven't gotten to all of them yet. As we see down here in chapter 51, which is the powerful abuses of power and wars. Look right here in verse 38. He says, it is time for love, forgiveness and humility to appear in the heart of humanity as true weapons to oppose hatred and pride. If men filled with pride and hatred continue to clash with one another, villages and nations will be destroyed and there will be no peace in the hearts of men. This is why there are some who believe that the 144,000 will be the only people that survive the tribulation. This is not the case. Remember the multitude of people that no man can number? There are a lot of people who will survive the tribulation. The 144,000 will be the forerunners. Those like captains on a football team, they will lead the way. And how will they do so? They will be of the first to use love. As love is more powerful than evil. They will be of the first to use forgiveness. And how is forgiveness a weapon, you say? Forgiveness of your brother helps cover your own mistakes. So whereas one of the 144,000 may make a misstep that will cause them to be defeated because of their forgiveness, their missteps will be overlooked, making their errors unseen by the enemy who would otherwise attack them in their weakened state. And humility, humility in itself is a powerful weapon. Arrogance is a destructive force that will destroy individuals. Arrogance doesn't harm your fellow man. The arrogant one harms himself. Humility makes one strong. You remember the New Testament said the meek will inherit the earth? As you see right here in the synonyms, meekness is a synonym for humility. It is with humility that these individuals will conquer evil, leaving them the earth as their spoil. They will inherit the earth. And how and, and what are they using these particular weapons for? To fight against hatred and pride. See, this is what it means by you have to understand which weapon to choose in which time. When you're in a prideful situation, you don't fight evil for evil and show your own arrogance when faced with an arrogant individual. You use humility to conquer that arrogant individual. The same way you use love to conquer that individual that has hate in his heart. These are the weapons of the 144,000. Now let's take a pause for a second and look at the enemy's weapons down here in verse 41 of chapter 51. It says, when will you achieve the peace of the spirit 
If you have not yet achieved peace in your hearts, I tell you that while the last killing weapons have not been destroyed, there shall be no peace among men. Killing weapons are those which men take lives, murder morality, deprive freedom, damage health, disturb peace, and destroy faith. See, these are what the enemy's weapons do. Those dark forces that want to see humanity extinguished. We were always taught that Satan wanted to destroy all of humanity. That he wanted to kill every one of us. Well, this is how he's doing it. Murdering morality. Making us give up hope. Depriving freedom or enslaving us. Damaging our health or damaging our temples. Disturbing the peace. Making us fight against one another. Or destroying our faith and us giving up on our father. Those are the killing weapons. Those are Satan's weapons. Verse 42 says, I shall prove to humanity that their problems are not resolved by force. And that as long as they make use of weapons of death and destruction, no matter how strong and terrible those seem, they shall not be able to make peace between men. On the contrary, they shall bring as their consequence greater hatred and desire for revenge. Only the conscious reason and sentiment of charity can be the foundations of which an era of peace can be built. But so that this light can shine in men, it is necessary that they first drink the cup of bitterness to the last drop. Talking about these killing weapons. This is why things are going to get so bad here on this earth for a while. If you look at Matthew chapter 24, you see that we are in the beginning of sorrows. All of these pestilences, wars, earthquakes in diverse places, famines and stuff that's going on. We're in the beginning of sorrows. But what comes at the end of the beginning of sorrows? The great tribulation, which means things are going to get even worse. But what comes at the end of the great tribulation? Peace. It is then only that all evilness will be wiped off of the face of the planet. There will be no killing weapons. There will be no hatred, no desire for revenge. The only thing that will be left will be conscious, reason, and sentiment of charity. That is the kingdom of heaven that we hear about. But before we can get to that kingdom, the tree of evil must be cut down and destroyed, burned in the fire. You can hear the saws and the axes whacking away at that tree even now. You look down here in chapter 52, which is the injustice and decay of humanity. You look at verse 41. He says, this world of the marvels of men built by centuries of science, struggle, war and tears will be destroyed by their own hands and with their own weapons because the time is coming when humanity will realize the inconsistency and fragility of their works, which lacked love justice and a true yearning to become perfect talking about that tree of evil going away but notice right there it says destroyed by their own hands see we can't be blasphemous and say that all of the evil that is taken on the world is coming from the father the father loves us he wouldn't do any he wouldn't do anything to harm us it is man that is going to destroy man it is man that's going to cause the earthquakes, the pandemics, the wars, the famines. We have been doing so for centuries. And like a raging fire, it's going to blaze until all of its fuel is consumed. Looking down here in chapter 55 of the Third Testament, which is the purification of the world and humanity and the judgment. Verse 24 says, evil has extended his kingdom and has been strong on earth. And it is precisely in this time that I bring my weapons to oppose these powers so that my kingdom of love and justice may be established among mankind. See, like we've said over and over, there will be no evil in the kingdom of heaven. So while man is destroying itself 
fighting evil against evil, this will be allowed to play out until both sides are dead. Leaving only those with love in their heart to take part in the kingdom of heaven. The only thing about it, if it had been left up to man, they would have killed everybody on the planet. That's why the father with his infinite wisdom left us the 144,000 that will save a small part of humanity and allow mankind to go on down here on the earth and equip them with the weapons to carry out that mission. Jumping down here in verse 78 of chapter 55, it says, It is in the elevation of your lives that you can find the power of virtue to save yourselves from the actions of the unchained elements. For it is not the weapons of faith and prayer alone that will give you victory over the vicissitudes and adversities of life, that faith and prayer must be accompanied by a life that is virtuous, clean, and good. See, this is why you have to have knowledge in his word. See, right here it says weapons of faith and prayer alone is not good enough. For it is not the weapons of faith and prayer alone that will give you the victory over the vicissitudes and adversities of life. Just having a blind, just having faith and prayer is not going to get us there no he says that faith and prayer must be accompanied by a life that is virtuous clean and good now we should dig into the words here to try to understand exactly what does he mean what does he mean by being virtuous in the shepherd of Hermes, we learn that there are 12 powers that mankind fights against but there are also 12 virtues. Let me show you those right quick. Looking over here at a spreadsheet table where I've laid out the 12 powers that fight against mankind. I've also laid out the 12 virtues to which mankind must take on in order to be candidates for the kingdom of heaven. Some of the evil ones are things like sadness, anger, lying, pride, hatred. There are 12 of them all together. Any one of them will cause you to miss out on the kingdom of heaven. These are the powers that humans fight against. The virtues that they will have to take on include faith, power, patience, cheerfulness, understanding, and charity. These are the virtues of all those who will inherit the earth and enjoy the kingdom of heaven. Anybody that does not put on these 12 virtues may get the chance to see the kingdom of heaven, but they won't get to go in. Then he says being clean. This points us to the law. Like he talked about earlier, Obedience to the law is of extreme importance. Like a YouTube video? Yeah. Oh. You want you want to be in a YouTube video? Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on. Hold on, stand right there. <laughs> Being clean means the obedience to the law. And being good. That's talking about charity for one another. That's talking about charity for our brother. So we have to take on these three along with faith and prayer in order to fight against these unchained elements. And what are these unchained elements that he talks about? Hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanoes, tornadoes, wildfires that are taking over the world even today in this period called the beginning of sorrows. But let's go on. I'm down here in chapter 57 of the Third Testament, which is reversion and renewal in all human areas. Cameron is going to help me out with this verse 35 right here. What it's talking about, it says, you should expect the struggle to be great, for all of you shall need to fight against the dragon of evil whose weapons are ambition hatred 
earthly powers, lust, vanity, selfishness, lies, idolatry, and fanaticism. Very good. All being the forces of evil born of the human heart and against which you must fight with grace, carriage, and faith until you have defeated them. Thank you very much, Cameron. You're welcome. All right. God, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the comment down below. Say it again. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit comments down below. <laughs> Very good. All right. I can come down here sometime. I'm going to say I can come down here. I can come down here and help you. All right. Well, you just did. I'm going to put that part in the video, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to go ahead. Talking about the weapons of the dragon. These being the forces of evil born in the human heart and against which you must fight with grace, courage, faith until you have defeated them. You remember over there in Revelations where they said that there was a war in heaven? This is that war that's talking about here. We have to understand the spiritual nature in just about everything that goes on over there in the book of Revelation. And when Michael was fighting against the dragon, this is that war that's going on in the hearts of humanity. Like we said earlier, there is no evil in the kingdom of heaven. It must all be extinguished first. So this war against the dragon must take place first in the hearts of humanity. Like it says down there, you must fight with great courage and faith until you have defeated them. You have to fight against ambition. You have to fight against hatred. You have to fight against earthly power, lust, vanity, selfishness, lies, idolatry, and fanaticism. Let's, let's slow all down a little bit of this for a moment and see why it is that these things are so bad. Some of them are not so clear. Like, for instance, ambition. Ambition makes you not content with what you have puts you in a, in a position to break the 10th commandment, which you shall not covet. Ambition is tied to materialism. And materialism is the opposite of spiritualism. Then hatred. I think it's easily understood how hatred must be fought against. What about earthly power? Earthly power has always been in opposition to the father's power all the way back to Nimrod building the Tower of Babel. In the Kingdom of Heaven there will be no head. There will be no government systems. All of the beast systems will be destroyed. That's why they call it the Kingdom of God. Because the Father becomes the King. Man will no longer be the King ruling over humanity. The Father will rule over humanity. Lust Vanity, which is the opposite of humility. Vanity and arrogance are synonymous. Arrogance won't go into the kingdom of heaven. It is the meek that will inherit the earth. Selfishness, remember how we said being good means to look out for your brother, to have love for your brother, to share, and to be selfish is the opposite. It must be fought against. You remember the powers we told you over there? Charity is one of the virtues that you must put on. That we learned in the Shepherd of Hermes. Lies. A lying spirit must be fought against. We have to have truth over lies if we want to inherit the earth. Idolatry. Which has many meanings. One includes putting faith in false prophets and fanaticism, which talks about how many believe that their religion is the only religion, how what they believe in is the only truth. If you don't belong to a certain group or believe in certain things, then how you're not going to be saved. It takes all types to have a full understanding of what the Father wanted for us. He gave nobody the complete truth and if you isolate yourselves from one another you will be missing large portions of truths necessary to go into the kingdom of heaven. 
these forces have to be defeated and they will when we read over in Revelations we see that Satan is kicked out as we read over there in Revelations we see that the dragon is defeated and Satan is kicked out of heaven well this is what he's talking about he's locked away for a thousand years all of these evil forces will not exist in the millennial age that thousand year period where the father rules over the earth that's what it means but let's go on looking down here in chapter 61 which is exhortations and warnings from the Lord Verse 37 says, How different is the conduct of he who forgets to keep vigil and pray. He voluntarily renounces to defend himself with the best weapons I have placed in man, which are faith, love, and the light of knowledge. It is he who does not hear the inner voice that speaks to him through intuition, his conscience, and in dreams. The heart and the mind do not understand this type of language and do not believe in the message sensed by their own spirit. Talking about those who don't keep vigil or keep watch or pray. Talking about spirit to spirit communication with the Father. Anybody that does not do this gives up his weapons voluntarily. And what are the weapons mentioned here? We almost need a pencil and a piece of paper to write down all of these weapons. The ones mentioned here are faith, love, and the light of knowledge, or the understanding of knowledge. These are weapons. Like we said earlier, don't think G.I. Joe, think X-Men. Don't think Bruce Lee, think Yoda. These are the weapons of the 144,000. If you do not keep vigil and do not pray, you look what it says here. You will not hear the inner voice that speaks to you through intuition, your conscience, and your dreams. This is the language by which our spirit speaks to us. This is how we hear the messages from the spirit, from intuition, conscience, and dreams. But if we're not keeping vigil and not praying, we voluntarily renounce these weapons and gifts. Now looking down here in chapter 62, which is the word for the present listener, verse 156 says, If you have faith in me, if you believe I manifest myself in the words of these spokesmen, do not fear the judgment of your brothers, for my doctrine is so eloquent. And so many truths are present in my message that if you know how to use these weapons, you will not be easily defeated. The 144,000 that uses these weapons will not be easily defeated. They will not be defeated. That's why they are the 144,000. They are the ones that the father set down with the primary mission of not being defeated. And as we follow their lead, emulate them, we will not be defeated either. Making our way back around, we're back up here in chapter 6, which is the third testament in the great book of life. Verse 33 says, I have told you, disciples, that you shall have to look at the great religions and the small sects directly in the eye, but before neither should you have fear. The truth that I have entrusted to you is transparent. The word that I have taught you is clear and simple on its surface, but infinitely deep in its content. And they are the powerful weapons with which you will struggle and win. Again, it's almost like we need a pencil and a piece of paper to write down how many weapons the Father has entrusted us with. This one is talking about the word and truth. It says that the truth is transparent. I'm sure that there's somebody in the world that will argue that this makes them invisible. Then it says that the word is simple but infinitely deep. These are truly powerful weapons. 
used by the 144,000, but available to us all. Now, looking down here in chapter 17 of the Third Testament, which is the new way of worshiping God, verse 124 says, When one of you prays, you do not realize what you reach spiritually with your thoughts. And it is necessary that you know that when you pray for your brothers, for those people destroying themselves in war, in those moments, your spirit is persecuting a war as well, a mental war against evil, and your sword, which is peace, reason, justice, and a yearning for the good of your brothers, clashes with the weapons of hatred, vengeance, and pride. Look at how powerful the weapon of prayer is, guys. While these guys are over here fighting with bullets and bombs and missiles, as sophisticated as they are, the 144,000 have thoughts that they can make mental war against this evil. This brings to mind that force that Luke Skywalker was talking about. I wish my wife was here, I'd get her to talk about those X-Men characters she likes so much. Maybe we need to go watch the movie The Matrix again. When you learn to take control of your thoughts, there's no telling what you will be able to do. Talking about the weapons of the 144,000. Let's look down here in chapter 33, which is a chapter about men and women, parents and children, family and marriage. Let's look at verse 71. It says, pure young women, of this people awaken and prepare yourselves for the battle do not be blinded by the passions of the heart nor dazzled by what is not real develop your gifts of intuition and inspiration as well as your tenderness and sensitivity strengthen yourselves in truth and you will have prepared your best weapons for facing the struggle this life presents talking about the weapons given to our sisters our mothers our daughters intuition and inspiration, tenderness, and sensitivity, as well as truth. Harness these weapons so that you can use them for facing the struggle this life presents. Down here in chapter 35, the power of thoughts, feelings, and the will. I'm going to start all the way back up here in verse 12. He says, this is why I have told you that you did not know the strength of thought. Today I tell you that thought is voice and hearing. It is a weapon and a shield. Talking about thoughts. Thoughts are extremely powerful. Now if we don't know how to use these thoughts, if we don't know how to control these thoughts, these thoughts can bring harm not only to others, but it can bring them to ourselves. But we're talking about the weapons of the 144,000. They will be able to use their thoughts as weapons, as shields that creates and destroys. Look right there how it says thought cuts the distance to those who are absent. Look right there where it says thought cuts the distance to those that are absent and finds those who have been lost. How powerful is a weapon or a tool that you don't even know which direction to aim it? You can merely think about where you want it to go and it will find the individual that you're thinking about. You may have a loved one in trouble in California or New York. It wouldn't even matter. Your thought can reach them. Your thought can cut the distance and find them. and become a weapon in their battles or a shield if they need it. Talking about the power of thoughts, talking about the weapons of the 144,000. Verse 13 says, know your weapons before the battle commences. He who knows how to prepare himself will be strong and invincible. It will not be necessary to wield mortal weapons. Your sword will be thought pure and clean. Your shield, faith and charity. Even in silence, your voice will resound as a message of peace. There gets no more powerful than this, guys. But understand that we have to understand what our weapons are. We have to prepare our weapons before the battle commences.
like when we join the US military the first thing they do is give us the weapons and start teaching you how to use them not knowing if you'll ever hit a battlefield or not you're an expert in your weapon before you ever get the chance and this we must be as well We must start honing these powers now, talking about the power of thought. He who knows how to prepare himself would be strong and invincible. Invincible. Talking about the weapons of the 144,000. There's no need to go down to the store and buy guns. Buy of me this weapon and you will be invincible. You won't need a gun. Like it says here, it will not be necessary to wield mortal weapons. Your sword will be thought pure and clean. I keep thinking about Star Trek and using the Jedi mind trick. Your shield will be faith and charity. Faith in his word and charity for your fellow man. He says, even in silence, your voice will resound as a message of peace. How powerful is the weapon that you don't even have to pull out? It's just there conquering all evil around you. Talking about the weapons of the 144,000. Looking down here in chapter 39, which is earthly and spiritual Israel, verse 17 says, You shall have to come before them, and each shall wield their weapons. One side, the word, thought, prayer, and evidence. The others, their talent power and traditions talking about when they have to use their weapons against the great religions of the world they will have talent they will have power as many of their people stand in high places with big congregation and lots of money they will have traditions long-standing traditions almost etched in stone in the hearts of humanity but the 144,000's weapons will include the word their thoughts prayers and evidence this evidence will come in the form of healing people and doing other things that humanity considers supernatural Verse 25 says, this people will be strong and combative, but shall not have weapons that kill, nor the chariots of war, neither shall they sing hymns of destruction. Their banner shall be peace, their sword truth, and their shield love. Talking about the 144,000, this is a different type of warrior. This is the Messiah's warriors. They must have and do have weapons that cannot be defeated. As the Father's mission will not be defeated. We will have the kingdom of heaven. You look right here in chapter 39, which is earthly and spiritual Israel. This is the chapter where we started and this will be the chapter where we are finished. Talking about the 144,000 and who they are. This section of the Third Testament talks all about the 144,000. You can see many, many classes we've done on those guys over there coming from this section of the Bible. Verse 57 says, Those marked by the light of the Holy Spirit are like lifeboats. They are guardians, counselors, and strongholds. I have equipped them with light in their spirits and with peace, strength, 
and with the helium bomb with keys that invisibly open the most stubborn of doors and weapons that overcome obstacles insuperable to others. Talking about the 144,000. These guys will not carry mortal weapons, but they are warriors nonetheless. They have weapons that overcome obstacles insuperable to others. Meaning stay weapons can do stuff that other people will find impossible. These are the father's soldiers, like lifeboats. They are guardians and counselors and strongholds. These are the 144,000. And these are their weapons. Know your weapons before the battle commences. Understand that you have the only weapon that can't be defeated. Imagine that. Pure thoughts will defeat all other weapons. Pray for us. Shalom. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit comments down below. <laughs> Very good.